Question, question, tell me where you at your motivation guy. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen is back again to inspire you guys to be great every single day, not just in this game, but also in life, man. I believe in you guys, so keep your head up, keep going forward, don't let no negativity stop you in your tracks, all right? The sky is the limit, so just keep going. All right, let's talk about solos. As someone who wants to eventually go pro, you need to master your own skills before you start just grouping up with others. People need to know that you carry your own skills and, and you can grab numerous eliminations and you can outbuild any player that comes your way. So to help you guys achieve this, we've compiled a list of tips that's gonna guide you guys towards victory. You guys ready for this? Well, let's first get my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? Help me out. A stab, bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. You know, one of the more notable accomplishments that you can strive for as a solo player is beating your high score in eliminations. Nothing shows your fragging skills better than getting 20, even 30 eliminations per match. Chapter 3 has made it so that fights last longer than ever before. You know, snipers and shotguns no longer do the one-hit kill, and this gives players just more time to make a comeback while forcing others to start thinking more strategically about their kills. Despite this, you know, there are still plenty of solo players that manage to breach 30 kills per match by applying pressure and using the ADS rifle, SMG meta, and just going in for third-party kills. However, the number of eliminations is peanuts compared to what you learn in the process. You're also learning rotation and population density of POI. You know, by constantly seeking out more kills, you're learning player behavior as you learn to anticipate where players are most likely going to start moving towards as the match progresses. And so you're also going to learn about finding the most optimal positions as the circle gets smaller and smaller. You know, one sound strategy has always been stay in the center of the circle, the larger during the early stage of the storm, and slowly start hugging the corners of the circle as you reach the later stages. This is going to allow you guys to protect yourself from players trying to sneak up behind you, but also put you in striking position to take Take down your enemies as they fight amongst themselves. In addition to learning player behavior, okay, you also learn how to use aggressive builds to take down your opponents quicker. All right, let's face it, like not every player you encounter is going to go down by just simply shooting them. Some are going to start building and when that happens, your goal is really to just outmaneuver them and just keep the pressure going. Box them in, you know, cut off their escape route and keep them away from any good loot on the ground. So if you guys need help getting those elimination numbers up, then click on the link below and check out AimLab. AimLab is a free program that you can download today and start working on your aiming skills. With so many customizable routines to really practice on, you can see improvement in a variety of different games such as Valorant, Apex Legends, and yours truly, Fortnite. All right, so another way to continue your quest for high eliminations, but also become a smarter Fortnite player is by getting into some trio or squad lobbies on solo. To do this, all you need to do is just turn off Phil Q. This is gonna allow you guys to drop into the match without being matchmaked into a team. This is gonna make you guys a smarter player overall because rather than just focusing on singular enemies, you're gonna be fighting other teams that might have more synergy than you. And so playing against a fully formed squad is an excellent way of training your awareness. In solo matches, players are gonna often leave themselves open to third party due to the fact that it's every person for themselves. In team modes, however, every weapon in the enemy squad is aiming at you. Thus, your mind needs to just keep up with the position of every player. This makes it more difficult now that you can no longer just shake down opponents for the location of the squad. So you're gonna have to just mentally keep track of every position yourself. This is a perfect exercise for your brain. And after doing this regularly, you're gonna find it much easier to track player positions on solo. Keep in mind guys, as a solo player, it can be difficult to achieve a victory out. You know, when the final player are all converging on one spot, you're going to be all alone dealing with a fully equipped team, all of which are most likely going to be carrying epic or higher weaponry, let's be real. However, if you manage to survive that onslaught, then you're going to be one step closer to becoming a better solo player. All right, so if there is one skill that you should work on, it's your building mechanics. So once you've figured out which builds to do, what it can be is just quite easier to just fall into the habit of only using builds for basic functions. Instead, you need to learn more complex strategies. So creating a tower can really seem simple enough. Just create a box and just keep moving upwards using ramps and just rinse and repeat. However, while doing this, you might fail to realize that your build is quite vulnerable. A few SMG shots to the base and it's gonna bring you and the tower crashing down. Instead, all right, just try building your structures using the in-game buildings as a base, build up a wall or against the side of a hill to really give yourself more support. Make it harder for your build to be brought down and you're always going to be able to have that height advantage. Boxing yourself in is a sound defensive strategy. However, unless you know how to maneuver around the box, all you're really doing is just putting up four walls and a roof. Once you have to defend that box against another player, your technique is going to be tested. And so if you own the box, then you have the freedom to edit it as you wish. So if a player wants to try getting in, 
you have the choice of just trying to keep that wall or lowering your opponent in while you know you're making an exit through the roof you can do this by creating a ramp within the space or just dropping a cone and editing it so that you can just move upwards although the most common way of moving up is a ramp editing a cone can offer a more three-dimensional way to really move upwards while also giving you guys room to position while doing so so using a cone as your roof piece can also be a clever way of just funneling players in a specific direction the edited cone is gonna provide you guys with a better exit than a flat roof but the opening made by editing goes in one direction so if a player is following you upwards they're gonna be forced to exit the same way you did unless they decide to expend you know ammunition breaking through this gives you guys a moment to predict where they're gonna pop up and hopefully land a few shots all right, so reading the map in Fortnite sounds simple enough. Like you take a peek to see what direction the bus is headed and you open it up once in a while to really know where the next circle is. However, reading the map can actually give you guys a bit more information than that and you can just use it to predict the movement of other players. All right, let's have an example. Let's say that you land at Greasy Groves. Now the first storm circle appears and it covers up a grand majority of the right side of the map. Now you have players coming in from Greasy Grove, Camp Cuddle, Log Jam Lumberyard, and maybe Shifty Shafts all headed in the direction of the the circle so if you're looking to make it to the late game but don't want to encounter many players while rotating then consider taking the long way around since many players are going to try to take the shortest route from their current location into the storm circle if you guys want to track players and really take them down you can see where they are more likely to pass through and just get there first so make sure to also study the terrain all right if, if there's a mountain along the path then expect some players to just try going around it rather than through it same goes for lakes all right, so now let's really take a dive into something new. So what do you guys know about login times? Like, do you get home from school and just log into Fortnite for your daily grind? Or perhaps do you like wait until the late hours of the night to really start playing arena? If you're a solo player and you wanna grind arena to raise those high points, consider logging in during tournaments. Yeah, I know guys, you're probably like, but I'm gonna miss the tournament. Well, hear me out, all right? Tournaments come in a variety of different formats from solos to trios, and so the sweatiest players are always gonna be participating in these tournaments in an attempt to gain recognition and hopefully do well enough to put it on their resume. However, you don't necessarily need to participate in every tournament if you're missing those arena points. Aside from competitions, you know, having a good arena score can actually help your reputation. So consider how well, you know, most likely you're gonna do in a tournament and you're only gonna be doing the bare minimum for arena points. And so perhaps you haven't even made it to champs yet and you need it. You also need to understand that the Fortnite community is made up of many people. People have responsibilities, therefore have a set time where they can and cannot be online. For example, if little Johnny needs to go to school from eight to three, then he's not gonna be sweating on you unless he sneaks off into the computer room for the sole purpose of playing Fortnite. All right, well, there goes that GPA. <laughs> In addition, if a player has other commitments, such as work, then those older players probably won't be longing in until later on. In fact, like if you really wanna see lobbies at their sweatiest, wait till like the dead of the night past 11 p.m. This is when players who have responsibility can log on with minimum interference. So if you're depending on the type of lobbies you want, check your time zones, man, and just figure out the best time to grind. All right, guys, so the last tip that we have for you guys today is to play arena. However, don't just stop there. You know, lonely landing spots are strategic, but this time, just keep landing on the major POI. Yes, this might sound like the most hectic thing to do in a competitive setting, but you gotta hear me out. Dying off spawn in arena can be one of the most soul-crushing experiences in Fortnite. I know all about that, man. Not because you lost the match, but because after you die, you have to go through more loading screens and go back to the lobby to start all over again. And so this can be a tedious process and quite a Annoying. However, the fact that, you know, it's so unpleasant really gives you guys more pressure to do well, right? And so if you enter a tournament, you don't always get another chance to make a comeback. Grinding arena on contested drop spots will not only expose you to more sweaty situations for you to fight against, but it also will ingrain the stakes of the match into your brain. As time goes by, you're going to start adapting to the chaos and survive just a bit longer each and every time. You know, once you've grown accustomed to this, you're going to see yourself surviving the early game on any POI. And suddenly, like getting off a roller coaster, the world will seem to move slower as your reaction times improves. So if you're thinking of landing contested, then don't forget to check out Aim Lab today. Don't go down without a fight and, and just perfect your aim and become the greatest sharpshooter on the island. But you got something that's gonna be it for today's video. Once again, this is your motivation guy, Keith Allen. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and spread the word because we got a lot of dope content coming out. Also, feel free to leave a comment and let us know if there's anything that you would be interested in learning more about. Remember, guys, stay grinding. Don't stop, don't quit. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.